Welcome to Beautiful Light, um, Mr. Gaji Live. Sorry, I almost forgot what we're doing tonight. Welcome to everybody from coast to coast. We are so glad that you are with us. I have Tanner Kalina backstage getting Instagram rolling, and he'll be with us in just a second. And Bishop Robert Brennan from the Diocese of Brooklyn will be our guest tonight as we talk about the preface during the Eucharistic prayer. So we're just thrilled to be here tonight. Hey, Tanner, how's it going? Oh, it's going great, sister. I'm super stoked for episode two. Let's go. I know. And I just want to note, we were celebrating God's goodness yesterday. We are almost at 5,000 views of episode one over our channels. And we're just really grateful to see how it's been so edifying to people. Yeah, we had no idea how the response would be. So we're just really stoked about that and excited to see how God will continue to use this to help all of us to enter more deeply into the mysteries of the mass. Amen to that. Yeah. And I'm super excited to talk about the preface tonight and praise and Thanksgiving and hear from Bishop Brennan. We were just talking about him a little bit before going live tonight. And I can listen to this man talk all night. <laughs> He's got an awesome New York accent and just a wonderful man. So we've got mm -hmm. quite an episode lined up for everyone at home. Absolutely. And tonight, as we get rolling, you can um, check out in the description of our show, a link to the original essay that Sister Maria Miguel Wright wrote for us on this topic last year when we premiered the essay series for our Mystagogy Exploration. Sister Maria Miguel is one of our editors for the Heart of the Revival newsletter, and she's a very dedicated um, Dominican sister, and we're so grateful for her participation and for helping us to kind of queue up this topic for this week. Yes, thank you, Sister M Maria Miguel Wright. That's, that's a beautiful blog post in there. I just dropped it in the comments. So feel free to check that out at your earliest convenience, y'all. And for tonight's layout, Sister is going to open us in prayer. And then we're going to introduce just a little bit about the preface and what we mean by that term and praise and thanksgiving. And then we're going to introduce our special guest, Bishop Brennan from the Diocese of Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. And he's going to dive into that with us. He's going to dive into all things about the preface at Mass so that we can see it in a new light. A beautiful light, if you will. And and then um, after we, we hear from Bishop Brennan and his teaching, we're going to open the floor to you at home for a QA. and a mm -hmm. Again, just same as last time, we ask that every question, every comment be respectful, and we thank you ahead of time for that. Absolutely. And for our friends that are out there, it looks like Facebook is having a little bit of a hard time streaming. It's not going through right now. So we might throw up a little comment there to send people over to YouTube. But if you know any friends that are trying to watch on Facebook, it is a Facebook problem. We are definitely trying to stream there. Um, and you're also welcome to let us know your name and where you're streaming from tonight in the comments as well. But let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the beauty of this Easter season and for the gifts that you abundantly overflow upon us every moment of every day. We pray in a special way of deep gratitude for the gift of your beloved son, Jesus, who you sent to dwell among us, to show us how to live, how to love one another, and who set us free from sin and death through the beautiful accomplishment of redemption in the Paschal Mystery. Open our hearts to your Holy Spirit tonight, Father, that we may hear what you desire us to hear and feel empowered and full of hope to go forth to share the good news of what Christ has done for us and how we experience that in a special way at every Mass. We ask especially for the intercession of Our Lady under the title of Our Lady of Guadalupe tonight and all of the angels and saints in heaven. And we make this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, sister, for everyone at home who's maybe never heard of the term preface in relation to the Mass, they might be thinking of like an introduction or so mm -hmm. some sort of preamble to something. What do, what do we mean by the preface? Absolutely. And that's kind of exactly it, Tanner. The preface is the formal prayer that leads us into the Eucharistic prayer, which is the part of the Mass where we really relive the Paschal mystery. So it's a prayer that's all about thanksgiving and praise, really. And we're going to dive deep into that and see how that makes connections to our everyday life, too, because part of the tradition of mystagogy isn't just to understand more deeply what happens at Mass, but how does that, what does that mean for my everyday life? And so we're really excited uh, for Bishop Brennan to come on tonight. And just like as a personal note there, 
I have this memory years ago, probably 18 years ago, of being at Our Lady of Lourdes Parish on the kind of north side of Chicago along Ashland Avenue. And they have this beautiful um, kind of dome above the sanctuary. And all these angels are painted in this dome. And I remember being there for mass one time. And it just was wild to, to have the angels represented by way of art, but it just reminded me of how we're so connected to the whole heavenly liturgy. Every time we go to mass, it was incredible. Oh yeah. Mama Mary's there. St. Joe is there. St. <laughs> Joseph, my boy St. Ignatius. Awesome. And, and for, correct me if I'm wrong, the preface at mass, when we, when we're talking about that, we're talking about, you know, when the priest says, lift up your hearts and we say, we lift them up to the Lord. That's and, right. and from that all the way up until we sing Sanctus, with the heavenly hosts all around us, right? right? Is that correct? You got it, Tanner. All right, look at me. putting a textbook next week on this. <laughs> I'm going to get my mythological degree after this. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, well, let's introduce Bishop Brennan, shall we? Sounds great. All right, so I have a little bio uh, on Bishop Brennan. On November 30th, 2021, Bishop Robert Brennan was installed as the eighth Bishop of Brooklyn, serving the people of Brooklyn and Queens. He's the oldest of five children and has 14 nieces and nephews and three great nieces and nephews. He was raised in Lindenhurst, New York, where his parents still reside and was ordained a priest in the Diocese of Rockville Center on May 27, 1989. Bishop Brennan currently serves on the USCCB Committee on Pro-Life Activities and is a member of the Board of Trustees for the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, D.C. Bishop Brennan, it is so great to have you with us this evening. Welcome. Let me tell you, it's great to be with you. Thank you. Thank you for the welcome. Oh, yeah, it's our pleasure. <laughs> So before we get into kind of the meat and potatoes tonight, we had a couple of fun facts that we wanted to share with everybody and kind of talk about a little bit. So Bishop, the other night, I'm not kidding you, my community was eating cheesecake in Chicago. One of the sisters is from Southern Connecticut and she said, did you know that this cheesecake, Junior's, was originally from Brooklyn? It's right it down was, the block from me. Oh my gosh, this is a chocolate peanut butter cheesecake that crushed Costco's <laughs> cheesecake. It was so good. <laughs> well, I have to tell you something. It is, oh, it, the Junior's cheesecake is, is, is a real staple, but you know, I think the Lord has a sense of humor. When I was in Ohio, I gave up at one point carbs and sugar. Okay. And then the Lord sent me to Brooklyn, the land of pasta, pizza, and pizza. <laughs> <laughs> he really loves you, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. And, and your excellency, I hear that you're a New York Mets fan, which gets me really excited. One of my earliest photos of me ever taken in my life, I'm in a little Mets jumpsuit or Mets onesie because oh, my wow. dad is a super big Mets fan. And then I actually got to be a Mets bat boy for a game at Minute Maid Park against the Houston Astros back when they had Pedro Martinez and David Wright, Jose Reyes, like all those guys. So I'm a big Mets fan as well. Wow, I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad, and glad you said that. So I guess that 1986 wasn't one of the happiest days in, uh, for the, in Houston. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Because I, I did. I lived in Texas. <laughs> I was Mets, surrounded uh, by Astros fans. Our Mets won in 86. Uh, do you think we have a chance this year? You know, I always say the Mets look great in April, and then <laughs> we have all the promise, all the, uh, all, all the, uh, the everything that's going to unfold, the dreams, and then it all falls apart bit by bit. This year, we're not even looking good in April. Oh man, yeah, <laughs> it's been a rough go. It's been a rough go. For all those watching at home, baseball starts in April. So if you don't understand Bishop's that's joke right. there, it starts in April. So if they look good at the beginning. By the time the season ends around September, October, yep. yeah, yikes! <laughs> but uh, but it, it, being a Mets fan is good because you uh, you root for them in all kinds of weather, in all kinds of seasons. We've had a couple of good years, and yet you, you know when you know you had a good year, you, there's always hope that there'll be another, and there will be, there will be. Um, Absolutely, yeah. It teaches you perseverance and how to face persecution. That's after. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> awesome. You mentioned lifelong. I was born the same year as the Mets. Oh, when, I was born in 1962, and my father was an old Brooklyn Dodger fan. Wow! And so uh, we just migrated right in. That was that was my team for life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're a Met for life. And now, yeah. and now I'm in the diocese uh, that serves Queens, where the Mets are uh, at home. Do you get to interact with the Mets at all? 
Um, I have not had that opportunity. Over the years, I've had different opportunities. Um, uh, one, of, one of my real memories um, is not so much with the Mets, but Bud Harrelson was with the 1969 Mets. And for a seven-year-old kid to see the uh, um, to, to see your t home team in the World Series, that was great. But Bud Harrelson was part owner and part manager, you might say, with, with the Long Island Ducks, a minor league team. And I got to know Bud Harrelson a little bit through there, through the Long Island connection. And, you know, when he just died, and he died with uh, after suffering with Alzheimer's, he knew he had Alzheimer's, and he came to the ballpark every day just to greet people and sign balls. And wow. he would say, he would tell you he had Alzheimer's. He, he was, you know, uh, right out there in front of it. And uh, I always liked him as a ball player, but boy, my estimation of him just skyrocketed when I got to know him later on when he was suffering. That's beautiful. Wow. Yeah. What a good man to know. Yep. Yeah. Praise God. The profound humility there, which is a great segue into talking about the mass bishop, because I mean, God is just profoundly humble. Of course, mm -hmm. my mind gravitates immediately to that profound mystery of how Jesus becomes present to us under the appearance of bread and wine. But we're going to focus on something that happens a little bit before that during the mass, the preface. And so I was hoping as we begin tonight that you could help us to understand what the preface is, why do we have it in the Mass, and how can we connect more as that part of the Mass happens when we participate? Beautiful, beautiful. You know, thank you. Thank you for that opportunity. I have to confess, Tana, when you said that you're so excited to be talking about the preface, I thought to myself, really? <laughs> I, I am. <laughs> no, that's like when I like try and really lock in, when the, when the priest tells us to lift up our hearts. Yeah, you know. Say, we lift up to the Lord. It, I tend to think, oh, you know, that's sort of where we where we zone out, like you were using the image of the preface of a book. And I don't know, I often skip over that and get right <laughs> into the, the book, maybe go back to it. But you are so right. Um, when, when I'm glad for this chance because it gave me an opportunity to think about the preface. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, how that prepares us, mm -hmm. sets our hearts and our minds to enter into that mm -hmm profound mystery of the Eucharistic prayer. It almost seems like it's one of the phrases you just have to get through. But when you think about it, um, I think three things I would say. One is the dialogue that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. The second would be the, the, the hymn, if you will, of thanksgiving. It really is, you know, it's right and just. It's all about thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, the way it ends, I never gave it this much thought. But the way it ends, sister, you spoke about the angels mm -hmm. gathered around. That we, we gather with the whole company of heaven as we're mm -hmm. about to undergo this act, this act of the greatest thanksgiving, the Eucharistic prayer. So those would be the three moments that I would highlight in, in the preface. So, yes, let's start with, the, uh, with the, the, uh, the greeting. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a great invitation. Lift up oh, your hearts. Go ahead. Lift up your hearts. We're about to do something amazing. Mm -hmm. And and the response from people, yeah, we've lifted them up in the, to the Lord. And then another invitation. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It mm -hmm. is right and just. Mm -hmm. It is right and just. Mm -hmm. and, and so that dialogue is, when you think about it, pretty profound. And it goes back to the, uh, the teaching of the Vatican Council, you know, that the Mass is in full, active, and conscious participation. Mm -hmm. This is one of those wake-up moments, everybody. <laughs> time, mm -hmm. time to be full, active, and, and, and conscious in your participation. Lift up your hearts. Mm -hmm. What we're about to do is amazing. Um, so I think that invitation, that little dialogue, is in itself really important. It really... Mm -hmm. um, catches our attention. And so now when I pray it, I, I'm going to probably be a little more attentive. And I hope some of um, the, those who are joining us too, that through this conversation might say, oh yeah, lift up your hearts. I'm ready to lift. I'm ready. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Realize where you're going, you know? That's right. Mm -hmm. About mm -hmm. to enter in. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, you know? And then that's it. This, the prayer itself is one of thanksgiving. 
And again, I confess, I know Eucharistic prayer, read through it. I know I pray it every day and studied it. It, it, Eucharist is Thanksgiving, but the preface is really mm -hmm. taking a moment to give profound thanks to God. First of all, for all the work of creation and salvation, for everything that God has ever done mm -hmm. through, the, through, through the millennia of creation. But the preface kind of gives us the context of where we are, right? Mm -hmm. um, that we're celebrating a particular season Mm -hmm. um, or we're celebrating a particular feast or we're focusing in on a particular need. So it is right and just we give you thanks, O oh Lord, for all the things that you've done. I look at the model. I look at the preface that's associated with the second Eucharistic prayer. Right. And, um, it, it, it focuses in. Um, I pulled out my missile so that I'm ready, you know. Uh, awesome. it, it's truly right and just to give uh, our duty, our mm -hmm. duty, and our salvation. Mm -hmm. It's our duty and our salvation. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And, and then it goes through those works of salvation. Mm -hmm. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom he made all things. It mm -hmm. brings in who he sent as our Redeemer, born of the Virgin Mary. So it brings in that sense of, of Christmas, if you will. It brings in that sense of God emptying himself and coming among us to live with us, to, 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 to walk with us, to share our joys, to wipe our tears, to carry our burdens with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, born of the Virgin, uh, conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin. And then um, coming to live among us, but then fulfilling his will, he stretched out his arms on the cross. So that same preface mm -hmm. brings us also to Good Friday. Mm. He stretches out on his arms on the cross. In fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his arms as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death. And then, of course, here comes Easter to mm -hmm. manifest the resurrection. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> that, that's kind of a general preface. You know, the other ones focus in on the Easter season or on the Christmas season, but just that one seems to get it all, right? God. Mm. We give you thanks for everything you've ever done, God. But boy, we have to stop and think about how you came to live among us, mm -hmm. how you died for us, how you broke the bonds of death and manifested the resurrection. So, yeah, our prayer of the preface is a hymn of great thanksgiving. You know, mm -hmm. before you start to ask the Lord to change this bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ, you first remember that God's always do doing great things for us. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, even just as you were slowly going through that and then kind of reflecting on it with us, it's almost like it reminded me of when we do Lexio Divina with Holy Scripture, you know, just slowly reading it and reflecting, letting the Holy Spirit move our hearts. Yeah. And like, my heart is moved right now. We're not even praying the mess, you know? No. Um, it just makes me think about that sense of slowing down bishop because they think our lives are so busy and they move so fast um but even if you get a really simple missile there's a lot of monthly missiles um i know yes. i do with the magnificat i know osb has their own but just to open that page in the middle and to look at that preference and just to sit with it and kind of help us to to be able to engage more when we go to the mass you know it so reminds us of what god has done years. yeah and when we remember what god has done yeah then we're a little more aware of what God is doing. Mm. That's right. Yep. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. When yeah. we, when we like thank God, we have to like recognize what he did. It's like mm -hmm. recognition is so integral. Is it the Hebrew? There's a car when you like recollect, um, like God's work. I yes. Think I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I, I'm no biblical scholar, but I think mm -hmm. it's a car to, to remember God's work. Remember to reflect. Yeah. Yes. Very, very that's right. That's right. And um, and for us, um, there too, in a word that you'll use when you go deeper into the Eucharistic prayer, anamnesis, mm -hmm. it's all about remembering that mm -hmm. we, we remember, we remember what God has done. And then the last part of it, the, the, again, something I don't always give as much thought as I should, but and so with all the angels and the saints, we declare your glory. And sometimes it really stretches it out, like now in Easter, the thrones and dominions, seraphim and cherubim, <laughs> singing endless praise. But that gets back, sister, to your image of the angels praying around us. But that, I think, is so important, that 
here we are, we're praying with the whole church. And I'm not talking about the whole church here in Brooklyn. I'm not talking about the whole church even in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the united mm -hmm. church in heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I often say to people is, you're never closer to the people you love who are in heaven mm -hmm. than when you're at the altar or around the altar praying at Mass. Because at that moment, when we are around the altar in the church, mm -hmm. we're sitting at the same table. We're joined at the same banquet. We're wow. at the banquet of the Lord and all the angels and all the saints. And you know what? All the saints, that means, you know, some of the big ones that you named, some of the... the the heavy hitter heroes, uh, but it also means my grandparents and my mom who just went to, to the Lord. I, I'm never close. You know, we go to the cemetery to be close to the people we love, but we're even closer. Mm. We're even closer when we're sitting at, or kneeling at mm. mass because we're at this, we're together at the same banquet. Heaven and earth are joined together. Mm -hmm. How hopeful. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Especially for those of us who've lost someone, like go to mass, like be with them, be with our Lord. And like, it doesn't like yeah. end, you know? When, when be with die. our Lord and his family and our family, you know? I love that. It, it goes back. It's like a Thanksgiving dinner in a sense. Uh, maybe without the drama and something. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, I, my parents, what did they love most when the family gathered? What does God love the family gathered around the table, around the banquet? Mm. And that's, that's what's happening. And, when, and we recognize that when we say those lines, and with, so with all the angels and the saints, uh, the cherubim and seraphim, that we declare your glory in one hymn of praise. Yeah. We're not we're not praying alone. We're praying with everybody sitting around us, and we're praying with the church throughout the world. But we're also with one voice, yes, singing praises to God. Wow. Yes, it's, it's so you know it's so beautiful, Bishop. It reminds me of um, reconciliation. You know, at the beginning of the mass, we have the uh, the penitential rite, and that's in order to help us to be united to God and one another as we celebrate the mass. But it takes me even all the way back to the beginning of time when God created the angels, right? And then he creates the world and the people. And then, but there's this conflict and we don't know exactly what it was, but some, some theologians, you know, they say, well, Lucifer was jealous that God was going to create human beings, right? So that there's this disruption among the angels and all of God's heavenly creation. And yet here we are centuries and millennia later, able to unite in praise with the angels that even that connection between heaven and earth has been reconciled because of what Jesus has done for us. That's right. Yes. So profound. For so our our, and then we sing our song just we sing our holy. <laughs> we, we, we shout out with one voice, holy, 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 Lord. Mm -hmm. you know? holy, holy so holy. Those, those would be the three moments I would focus in on that dialogue, that invitation and response, mm -hmm. that sense of thanksgiving, and then of course the unity with all the uh, heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. mm. That's so good. For our big Jesus and the Eucharist study, this is kind of like the one of the big initiatives for year two of the, of the Eucharistic revival. Um, we, we collected testimonies from all over the nation. And I remember this one. It was, I think, the, the most heartfelt testimony that we gathered. And it's about this man who lost his son. And he, <clears throat> he had this realization one day being in front of the altar, being in front of Jesus in the Eucharist, that he was viewing Jesus from one side and his son was up in heaven viewing Jesus from the other side. And he was like totally united with him there. And it's just, uh, yeah, just to kind of reiterate what you said and what we talked about. I just it's That's so a great good. image though, isn't it? Yeah, it's so good. Great image, great image. Awesome, oh my gosh. Bishop Brennan, you know, is as you've reflected on this and kind of helped us understand it more from a theological perspective, from a liturgical perspective, how do you think, or what would be one of your takeaways as you think about the connection between this part of mass and just our everyday lives? You know, we get sent at the end of mass, go, the mass is ended, but sometimes it's hard to kind of live from the experience of the mass. That's a very good question. I would say this, um, th that sense of lifting up your heart, 
and that sense of thanksgiving mm -hmm. has to be part of our life always. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it, it, we when we have that experience of thanksgiving, now we have it at mass. The Lord gives that to us as a gift mm -hmm. so that we can have it throughout the day, throughout the week, so that we can bring it with us. Um, I, I, a, a line of Pope Francis, he says, Sometimes too many Catholics look like they're just coming from a funeral. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? So maybe one of the things you want to say is, hey, lift up your hearts. <laughs> yeah. you know? Lift up your hearts. Uh, because we've been saved. Because Jesus Christ came. Because we don't walk alone. And because he, he broke the bonds of death and manifested the resurrection. Go, you know, when you're out there and... Let, Let's face it, I'm not saying that we live in a, uh, a make-believe world where there are no problems or no struggles. Mm -hmm. um, the fact of the matter is we do face incredible struggles. Some of us face terrible burdens. Mm -hmm. And this sense of thanksgiving is to remember that we're not alone. Mm -hmm. when, we can, when we can give thanks, we're more aware of God's presence, of his walking with us. When we give thanks for the ways that God has kept his promises in the past, mm -hmm. we can find a little bit of confidence or a little bit of hope mm -hmm. that no matter what I'm going through, God's going to be faithful to his promise. Mm -hmm. So that sense of thanksgiving carries us maybe throughout the day and throughout the week. Mm -hmm. That awesome. makes total sense. Yeah. If I Yeah, if I can't be thankful that my God is coming to me under the appearance of bread. How can I be thankful whenever I pull up to a stop sign at the same time as someone and they let me go, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, and he's coming to you, not just to make an appearance. He's coming literally to dwell within you. Right. You're, you're taking him with you. Right. Mm -hmm. Even you're better. Not, you're not just like saying, oh, isn't that nice? And then leaving the church. When, when you have, <laughs> chance to receive Holy Communion, he's going, he's going back with you. Right. It makes me think of um, when I was teaching small children, I would always give them the image of it's like we're moving tabernacles. You know, we yeah. leave the church, but Jesus leaves church with us. And sometimes we might be a person's first encounter with the risen Lord through the way that we treat them, through the way that we're kind to them, or, you know, even kind of navigate the challenges of their personalities um, that we can allow Jesus to shine through us in those encounters with people in our everyday lives. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, so, so good. So good. Well, sister, should we open this up to the, to the floor for everyone watching? I Fisher, think that, that was awesome. Good. Thank you. And you have such a joy about you when you teach. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love it. Thank you. Um, so everyone at home, if you have any questions that you would like to ask Bishop Brennan, then please, now's your time. Drop them in the comments. If you're on YouTube, drop them in the comments. If you're on Facebook, if you're on Instagram, ask away. We are ready. <laughs> I see Good. someone said, uh, no way, I'm a Yankees fan, but I will stay tonight anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Very gracious. Of that. Hilarious. Well, thank you for saying. <laughs> couple of shout outs to some of our viewers. We have Joan that's joining us from Madison and also James that's joining us from New Jersey. So welcome. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks for everyone who's joined us for the live stream. And if your friends can't join us tonight, it will be on our channels for them to watch and enjoy in the days to come. So thank you. Thank you for spreading the word as we try to dive deeper into the mass together. We have someone from North Carolina, New Jersey, Madison, Minnesota, all over tonight. Um, Bishop, Eucharistia, am I saying that right? The, the original Greek for the word Eucharist, it means Thanksgiving, correct? I think you That's correct. That. Yeah. The, the, the word itself means Thanksgiving. And so the whole of the Eucharistic prayer is a prayer of Thanksgiving and a prayer of remembrance. Um, but... but Eucharist itself is, is, is a thanksgiving. Yeah, wow. And it's also a little bit of a self-offering, too. You know, when, when we, we, you know, we, 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 we attach ourselves to, to Jesus, you know, he, it's his sacrifice. It's the sacrifice of the cross. 
but we bring our burdens, our uh, struggles to the Lord, and we offer ourselves. Um, we, 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 we offer the best of who we are and even the things that we struggle with um, mm. to the Father as a sacrifice. And, you know, God is never outdone in generosity. Amen to that. You know, the simple things we give him, he gives it to us back, but transforms it. You know, John Paul, II, Pope St. John Paul II used to say, time given to God is never time wasted or lost. Mm -hmm. It's time that's transformed. God does something with the sacrifice we make. We take an ordinary, not so ordinary, but we take a simple piece of bread, actually a simple piece of bread and some simple wine, and we offer it to the Lord. What does he do? He gives it back to us. Mm -hmm. But now it's his body and blood. God mm. is never outdone in generosity. Mm. Absolutely. I love that. Hey, Bishop, we have a question from Catherine, and she's asking about this reality of the communion of saints. She says, if we celebrate with our departed as part of the communion of saints, is it right to also have the notion that those who are in purgatory we're also celebrating with? Well, you know what? We're, we, in, in a sense, yes, because um, that's for those who are in purgatory, those who are making the transition, this is their hope. Mm -hmm. So for those who are in heaven, they're celebrating, they're at this banquet of the Lord in reality, mm -hmm. celebrating it in all of its fullness. Mm -hmm. We, I, myself, you, we're celebrating it in hope, mm -hmm. knowing that God is faithful to his promises. We're looking forward to the fullness of that. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that for those in purgatory, those on the way, right. this that th this is their hope. We are we, we, we offer the mass for individuals we for, for um in, in in particular at times you know mm -hmm. um and, and basically that's not just like a you know it's in honor of or in memory of mm -hmm. um no um we're offering as a prayer for the the cleansing and the purification of those who are faithful who are making their way in a sense to mm -hmm. the Lord being purified. And the, that same sacrifice of the Mass is their hope, just as it's our hope. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, I think it's clear. That's an interesting question, Catherine. I, it I, is actually, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another one for you. Uh, why do we sometimes say the penitential act and sometimes not? Well, actually, we, the, the, we generally do. The time, one time we don't would be um, if you, there's an alternate and that is the sprinkling rite. And that's often done at, at, at Easter time. Okay. Um, but uh, so, so instead of doing the penitential act, we would have the rite of sprinkling with holy blessing, holy water, and then sprinkling it upon the people. Mm -hmm. That would be the time that we don't use it. Um, at, but the penitential act has different options. Yeah. There are different forms of the penitential act. So one of the ones that's most familiar to us is the confidior. Uh, I confess to Almighty God, mm -hmm. and and that we go through the prayer, um, and and then the priest responds with um, a prayer: May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. And then you have the Kyrie: The Lord have mercies. Mm -hmm. That's one form. Now, instead of that, it might be that there were three tropes, like a litany of sorts. Mm -hmm. You know, you came together, the nations, into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. And then another one, Christ, have mercy. And then another, Lord, have mercy. And then there's a third form that is very rarely used, mm -hmm. uh, which is just, um, I, I, I have to confess, I, I, I remember it more in the former wording um, um, uh, that where um, Lord, grant us your mercy and show us your, your salvation. You know, mm -hmm. it's um, it's so rarely used. So that's a shorter one. So the the now I can't say if somebody shortens it. I don't I don't know if anybody's taking any shortcuts. I don't want to call anybody out. That's <laughs> my job here. I'm not here to do that. But generally, yes, the penitential act or a sprinkling rite is always used. It's just that it takes different forms. Very interesting. Very interesting. I know that's a little bit tangential to the preface, but but thank you for going. Hey, we're we're, mm -hmm. we're all together talking about the mass, so why not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, thanks so much for that question. Um, another question from Jim, this is a, a really beautiful one. Um, he asks, how do you personally experience the preface? What is it like for you when you pray that part of the mass? Well, I do find it a, a, a great moment. You're kind of going prayer to prayer to prayer, um, a little bit of action. And then you, I, I do find that dialogue somewhat uplifting. The Lord be with you and, you know, and with your spirit. It, it's sort of like a... Um, uh, 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 a high point to, to to call those invitations. So, I I, I find that to be um, a very moving. It's a, a moment of unity with everybody else there. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I I think I'm going to pray it a little bit differently after this conversation. Mm -hmm. I have to be very very honest with you. Mm -hmm. So how do I, I I I have that intellectual knowledge of. Um, you know, Thanksgiving and the angels and saints, but I, I, I'd be honest, I haven't reflected on it that much. And I'm so really glad to have this chance to reflect it. I think I will pray it a little bit differently now mm -hmm. um, after uh, our conversation. I certainly will as well. Yeah, yes. thank you. Um, yeah, I, I heard somewhere one time that like when we say, because you're saying the prayer on behalf of all of us, mm -hmm. right? I'm not, I'd be like, sweating up there that'd be <laughs> uh, but when we say like and with your spirit like we're we're really like we're saying like like lord please be with this man who is like acting in persona christi and like on behalf of all of us like we're really like we're praying for you up there as well uh, that's 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 beautiful you're right yeah. yeah yeah so i think it's important for everyone watching to like yeah really like have gratitude for the father but also like gratitude for this this man this priest or this bishop mm -hmm. who has given his life in order to do this on your behalf so that he can feed you with jesus like that's it's a great sacrifice on his end too you know it brings me to something that i think is so important in what you're doing with this series um uh, that very often we, we are thank god so many people are so much in the habit of going to mass every week or mm -hmm. every day. People, let, let's be honest, most of the people who would tune into um, this hour would probably be the kind of people who are, who are going to mass. Mm -hmm. But the flip side of that is it can become kind of habitual and you just mm -hmm. go through the motions. Um, and so to take it apart and to meditate and to discuss each of the moments can help us all to, uh, mm -hmm. to to contemplate more seriously exactly what's happening at the different parts of the mass. So I'm so glad you're doing this. <laughs> oh, thanks, Bishop. We're so glad too. We're glad you're with us. A um, couple more questions here. So one, Edwin asks about recommendations for resources or texts to study more on the preference and its significance. So before I pop over to you, Bishop, I would note if you look in the description for our show tonight, Edwin, we have a link to the original essay that's a pretty good start um, there. So I would recommend that, but any other thoughts that you might have? Yes, I think that's an excellent start. And there's a beautiful reflection too in there from St. Augustine in your link. Mm -hmm. So I, I highly recommend it. And that's really where I focused in on that, that third part. The angels and the saints. Um, it's not there's not very much to it, but in the general instruction of the Roman Missal, it, it, when they talk about the different parts of the mass, it, it gives you a little catechesis. But based on that, sister, you said before, pick up a missal, pick up the Magnificat, mm -hmm. one of those. The best source to learn about the preface is the preface itself. <laughs> Right, to pray right? with it. Uh -huh. and, and, and you don't need a deep theological background to, uh, to have this significance. Um, look at, uh, um, they'll give you a couple. Most missiles will give you, they'll certainly give you the one that I looked at because it's associated with the second Eucharistic prayer. But then they'll probably give you some seasonal ones. You know, like if you pick up the April Magnificat, there are the Easter ones in there, I'm sure. Yeah. But just read them prayerfully and mm -hmm. let the Lord speak to you or actually you're speaking to the Lord. Join your voice mm -hmm. to that. Um, I think that's probably the most uh, 
uh, powerful tool, the most powerful source. Uh, let that part of mass instruct you and talk mm -hmm. and speak to your heart. Um, Bishop, yeah, me over here, over here. <laughs> uh, did, was it St. Thomas Aquinas who wrote these prayers? He wrote the ones for, um, he wrote the ones that are associated with the Feast of Corpus Christi. Oh, okay. Just he may have written them. some of these others as well. I mean, again, the second Eucharistic prayer probably goes back to the early church. It was more of a, at that time, it was written as something of a model. Mm. You know, the, the, the model off of which you would re pray the Eucharistic prayer. But as it was all collected, that that would go way back. Um, but uh, but I know the text of the Mass for Corpus Christi, or the, um, or I guess the votive Mass of the Holy Eucharist would be uh, Thomas Aquinas for sure. Okay, that no, that makes total sense because I, I did do a little research today so I didn't sound like a total dummy in front of you. And, and they were saying that like the preface is like really ancient. So that wouldn't make sense for it all being Thomas Aquinas. Well, you know, for, for me, everything before 1960 is ancient. This <laughs> <laughs> would be so awesome. Well, I know for a fact that the uh, the Eucharistic prayer too is comes from the oldest sources. That's right. Of, exactly. of the most That's ancient I mean celebrations ancient of the Mass. Mm -hmm. and, That's and, wild. And the model, if you will. That's correct. Right. right. That's so cool. That's epic. And how many, oh, go ahead. how many Eucharistic prayers are there, Bishop? Good question. Traditionally, there are the four Eucharistic prayers. Mm -hmm. And the, the, um, those are the, the traditional Eucharistic prayers. And then over time, the church uh, had introduced um, two Eucharistic prayers for reconciliation. It's sort of like an appendix. Mm -hmm. And four Eucharistic prayers for various needs and occasions. And they match some of the prayers for particular needs. So uh, usually, when you hear which Eucharist, you know, which Eucharistic prayer are you using? It's something between one and four. Okay. Uh, but uh, and probably two and three would be the most often used. The first Eucharistic prayer would be the Roman Canon, which. Um, while Eucharistic prayer two goes back to the ancient, the most ancient text, the mm -hmm. Eucharistic prayer, the first one is most um, it, it most tied to the uh, prayer that was used in, in the mass before 1962 in the mm -hmm. the Latin mass. It would be um, that would be most closely associated with uh, that prayer. Mm -hmm. Wow, cool! That's so cool. I love that. We have do other you, questions, sister. Yeah, do you have a favorite Eucharistic prayer to pray? Oh, yes, I do, but uh, I might scandalize you. <laughs> <laughs> I, for, I, I, I do go with the second one very, mm -hmm. very often. They're mm -hmm. all very beautiful and have very a beautiful language and beautiful imagery. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I might scandalize you is it, I, I'll confess it is the shortest one. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's not the reason why. I just find a beauty in the simplicity mm -hmm. of the words. Mm -hmm. It really focuses in on the, the, the words that really matter. Mm -hmm. And this is personal taste. I'm not putting the, uh, uh, denigrating any of these. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's something about slowly and prayerfully praying that second prayer, but just any prayer, but where, you know, with fewer words and just really focusing in on them. Uh, that That is why I often turn to the second Eucharistic prayer. That, that's mm -hmm. that's personal. I know that for a lot of priests, especially younger priests, they, they turn to the first Eucharistic prayer and mm -hmm. that has some very beautiful imagery in it. And again, it has some great tradition to it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, just my personal style, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I like the starkness, the, the, uh, the focus of it. Yeah, you know, as you were saying that, Bishop, what it made me think of was very edifying is, and I think I'd like to kind of mess around with this a little bit, but I, I was thinking of parallels between the four 
Eucharistic prayers and their prefaces in the four gospels. And Eucharistic mm -hmm. prayer too is kind of like Mark's gospel. It's oh, really wow. tight. It's really condensed, but like it's kind of the core of everything. And I mean, yeah. my favorite, my favorite is Eucharistic prayer four, which is almost never prayed. Yes. Um, but that one's kind of like John's gospel. It's just like <laughs> really rich. Um, yeah, I'm gonna stop there. But that's the Eucharistic <laughs> prayer to <through> Jesus love. <laughs> <laughs> it, it has some powerful imagery. And there are some powerful images in the uh, Mass for Various Needs and Occasions mm -hmm. and, and, in the, and in the Reconciliation. There's one um, in, the, in, the, the, uh, in, in the Prayer for Reconciliation, there's a line in one of them in, where, where we express our hope, we're looking forward to heaven, where we will be saints among saints in mm -hmm. the halls of heaven. Mm -hmm. You know, so, wow. so there are beautiful prayers. And, you know, going back to that um, suggestion about praying or just reading the prefaces, mm -hmm. you know, maybe just reading the Eucharistic prayer so that you might be more attentive to it as it is mm -hmm. being prayed at the Mass. That's another thing, using these missiles or these aids. Some of them are online, some of them uh, are, are, are paperback, and some of them are, you know, the the, the durable missiles, the St. Joseph Missile, mm -hmm. but praying those Eucharistic prayers too, just reading through them to say, what what do we really say? Mm -hmm. It's not just a lot of words. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and powerful images. Super mm -hmm. powerful and divinely inspired. And yeah. it, it's, the, the language is so obviously inspired by the Holy Spirit. Like the proof is in the pudding. And it's sad because, and I'm totally guilty of this. Like I can become completely numb to this epic, like that is unfolding. It, it's like if someone were to just spout the same Shakespearean play to me over and over, I would eventually, it would, the language would lose its like, like grip on me. Um, but this is like the most finely crafted art really. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. uh, of any poem ever mm -hmm. or, or the, is the preface and the Eucharistic prayer that we're, we're praying every day. So cool. Mm -hmm. You know, there's uh, often in sacristies, you'll see a, a sign, a little sign that somebody will post it as, as a reminder to the priest, um, priest of God, say this mass as, as if it were your first mass, as if it were your last mass, mm -hmm. as if it were your only mass. Mm -hmm. And that's a, Good uh, stop in your steps and think about what you're about to do, kind of a moment. Um, and, and, and it's a good and powerful reminder. Absolutely. It is yeah. so powerful, Bishop. Um, we have a couple more minutes if anyone else at home has any more uh, questions that they'd like to share tonight. We also got a good um, comment about the preface in the catechism. Zachary was reminding us that in catechism of the Catholic Church, 1352 and following, you can also read about the Good Eucharist. idea. You, you can go to the catechism for anything. Very well said. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Also, I've, I've had this in my hands the entire time. This is what I was reading, so I don't look like a dummy. What happens at Mass? A nice little kind of walk through every little stage. And tonight I was reading the preface before this. But this is just a I think it's written by a Benedictine, a Benedictine monk. Good little read. Who Very published good. Is that one, Tanner? Pardon? Who publishes that one if people want to look for it? Oh, who publishes that? Liturgy Training Publications. Oh, great. But they're actually in the Archdiocese of Chicago. Right oh. Down, yeah, right down the street. Nice. That's awesome. Well, we do have a couple, a couple of people have asked about this, Bishop, so I think we should probably ask you, who are your favorite Eucharistic saints? Ah. Who are you? Um, let's see. Well, certainly the whole world is falling uh, in love with the uh, Blessed Carlo Acutis, right? He's, this, this young man is a uh, great inspiration uh, to, to all of us. Um, and then I guess I do go back to, uh, to Thomas Aquinas mm -hmm. and, and, and his great love. And then finally, I can, I can't give up on Pope St. John Paul II. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, he had a beautiful love for the Eucharist. Um, and he, you know, uh, he, he was Pope. He became Pope during my teenage years. Mm 
and all through my years of formation and for my first years of being a priest, um, there's so much. He gave us the year of the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. um, and he's the one who's often called priest, you know, be conscious of what you're doing. Um, so uh, I, I really would uh, turn very often to uh, Pope St. John Paul II. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his love of the Eucharist was awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking forward. We have our Eucharistic revival event coming up. And um, and so we were planning to have it in the uh, fall, but the rains just came down and we had to postpone it. So we have it coming up later in April. So say a prayer for that, please. But we're expecting some 10,000 people to gather um, in the tennis stadium the, where the U.S. Open is played um, mm -hmm. on uh, for, for a Eucharistic revival event. And... Uh, they're going to be making pilgrimages from different points in Queens. I'll be making a number seven train pilgrimage. <laughs> nice. that's, that's the subway that takes you to the uh, to to Shea, what was Shea Stadium, City Field, and to the tennis stadium. So that one's very much associated with the Mets. But we're going to take it over, and we're going to make it ours. And, and people are going to join in on the subway ride, and we're going to make our way together. To, wow, that's so to, fun. To, to celebrate the Eucharist. So people will be walking from different parts of Queens. Um, so we're looking forward to that. What, what a great event that's going to be. Yeah. Actually, we've had one person is asking about, do you need to get tickets for that, Bishop? Well, I, I, that's a good question. We are getting tickets through Tickettron and I, uh, Ticketmaster. I, we're required to do that. Um, so it is ticketed, but I was just told today that people will not be turned away at the door. Okay, that's awesome. So, you, so if you show up and and tell them I sent you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you should be, that I could come. They, I mean, you they just had me. They just had me report a promotion saying you don't have to. Uh, 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 you, you don't. You, if you show up, we'll get you the ticket. They'll scan it and all that. Um, nothing against Ticketmaster, but. Um, it's it, it, it's something very complicated in dealing with emails and this and that and the other thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel, I don't know who is that, is it Taylor Swift or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> We're going through our own Taylor Swift moment around here. <laughs> so to welcoming everybody in. Oh, you're so culturally aware, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> I love your sense of humor, Bishop. It's been a joy having you tonight. That New York mm -hmm. sense of humor, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, Bishop, we we can't thank you enough for joining us tonight. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. Thank you for making it approachable to us and beautiful. Uh, are there any like last comments that you would want us to know about the preface before we ask you to bless us? And I would sure. just repeat that one line. Let's lift up our hearts and mm -hmm. let's give thanks to the Lord always and everywhere mm -hmm. after all as we say it is right and just amen so that's it good Thank you, bishop maybe I'll, I'll, the prayer I'll, I, I during the these days of easter i love the regina chaley the the mm. queen of heaven rejoice and i i love that image too of the church saint and mary that we're rejoicing with you because of the resurrection of your son so we could perhaps pray that in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Queen of heaven, rejoice. Alleluia. For the Son whom you were privileged to bear. Alleluia. As risen as he said. Alleluia. Pray for us to God. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, for the Lord is truly risen. Alleluia. 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 And may Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Bishop. And for everyone at home, thank you for joining us. We're so thrilled that you could be with us. You can definitely catch the recap of the episode on our streaming channels. And next week, we will be talking about the epiclesis and the universal call to holiness with Bishop Gordon, the auxiliary bishop out in Las Vegas. And again, thank you so much to Bishop Brennan. God bless you all. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, Bishop. Thank Go you. back. God bless you. <laughs>